Today is the vigil of the great feast of the Epiphany, but this vigil is different from the vigil of Christmas, which was a day of penance, because at Christmas we were awaiting the coming of our Lord and trying to prepare ourselves as best as we could for the moment when he would come. But our Lord is now with us and is now, and now preparing us by his presence. On most vigils, the priest wears purple vestments, which symbolize penance, sacrifice, and preparation. But today we wear gold because we are still rejoicing that our Lord has come down from heaven to redeem us. We also have a few saints' feasts today. One of them is Saint Telesphorus, who is commemorated in the Mass. He was the eighth pope of the church and died as a martyr. The other one is Saint Simon Stylites. You probably remember hearing about him before. He was one of those saints who was called by God to live on the top of a pillar. When you first hear that, you think, well, isn't that a little arrogant? For prideful people are those who put themselves up on a pedestal. What business does a saint have in living like that? Well, you see, when what happened was Saint Simon was a shepherd, and at the age of 16, he entered a monastery. But he was so holy that he was actually disturbing the community life of the monastery. The less holy monks were jealous of him, and the weaker ones were damaging themselves, trying to practice the penances as, as he did. So he was eventually asked to leave the monastery. But this was fine with him, and he went to live as a hermit in a mountain in Syria. As a hermit, he practiced all sorts of extraordinary penances, like not eating or drinking anything for all of Lent. I wouldn't advise anyone to try that. Many of the things he did can't be imitated by us. Well, pretty soon people figured out that he was so holy, and they flocked to his cave to ask for prayers and miracles from him. And though he liked helping people, all this popularity was damaging his soul. So he went in search for a new place to live where no one could, could bother him and he could just focus on praising God. He eventually found a ruined building which had a few of its great pillars still standing. St. Simon was a pretty strong person to begin with, and I bet all of his years living in the mountain helped him become a pretty good climber. So he climbed up one of the shorter pillars and set up camp on top of it. This pillar was only about 10 feet tall, and he soon realized that this just wasn't going to cut it. So he eventually made his way to one of the taller ones, which was about 50 feet high. And this is where he spent the rest of his life. Though living on a pillar helped him practice penance, it didn't help him get away from the people. It was almost as if God wanted him up there so that he couldn't run away when people came to ask him for things. At one point, some holy hermits were wondering if he was really sincere and holy or if he was just being prideful. So they came up with a plan to test his virtue. They said, we'll order him under holy obedience to come down, and if he refuses, then we'll know that he is a fake. But if he obeys, then we'll know that he is from God. They ordered him to come down, and he immediately started climbing over the edge. So they told him that it was just a test and that he better stay up there because that was God's will. Like I said before, many of the things the saints do we can't imitate, and especially this saint. For if you try to live on a pillar somewhere, I don't think that would work out too well for you. But the good thing is, is that God doesn't ask us to do those things. He asks us to do easier things, 
but doing these easy things as best as we can makes God happier than if we try to do something great that God didn't ask us to do. Why did St. Simon become so holy? Because he was obedient. He was obedient to his superiors and, and most importantly, he was obedient to God. And we can be obedient too. And if we do this, then we are well on our way to becoming a great saint. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.